Welcome to Surfaces and Splines, a series of SolidWorks video tutorials presented by the Demonic Group. My name is Andrew Lowe. I'm an industrial designer with the Demonic Group. And in Surfaces and Splines, we take a look at the production tool-ready modeling of this work flashlight. Uh, in this installment, we'll be taking a look at modeling an indent and fading chamfer on the top of the flashlight. So fading chamfers and fillets look difficult to model, but they can be easily accomplished with the right technique. So here we're creating a diving or indented surface, and then we'll be able to build a chamfer that seamlessly fades out here and here. So the first thing we need to do is prepare the indent area. So I modeled the uh, sketch that created this cut, um, and I dimensioned it to virtual sharps. So I needed to add fillets, and I wanted to do these curvature continuous face fillets, so that's why they were built one at a time. So I'll start the fading surface by creating a boundary surface. Remember it has to be tangent to that draft reference surface. It's actually hidden right now. But I'll ensure we have the correct uh, two degrees draft at our parting line. I also created a plane here. Um, this is a mid plane that I'll be able to create some layout sketches on. So I picked this bottom face and this top face to create uh, this plane. The next portion of the indent is just a surface extrude as these edges are, uh, are straight. Um, I do need to add a little bit of a trim, so that way when I build this fillet it has the correct flow. Uh, this fillet is easily built with a boundary surface between this edge and this edge, this edge and this edge. Make sure curvature to these two faces is turned on. And then I'll knit that into, uh, into the model. So the next surface I'm going to build is this diving surface. The most important part about the diving surface is this sketch here. So here, I actually have, if we viewed this from the top plane, our sketch cuts into the model here. So I just use the curvature combs to make sure my, my sketch was nice and clean, but you can see here that it's, it's diving into the model. So now that I have this boundary surface, it's actually terminating within the model, and this is what will allow us to build that fading chamfer. So I need to uh, finish these uh, indent surface off. And I could use a boundary surface here. Uh, I could go from this edge to this edge, from this edge down down to here. But uh, the, this shape of these three edges here, um, it's kind of flat with the two fillets, and that'll influence the shape of the resultant boundary surface. So I'm going to use a surface fill instead. And this is going to work a little better for me because it's going to overbuild that, that four-sided surface. You can kind of see it tucking over over this perimeter here, and then it'll trim it back to fit in that, that boundary. So that way this surface is not influenced by the shape. You need to make sure the optimized surface is turned off here. Um, with optimize on, it may try to make a, a, a loft here from this edge down, down here. But with optimize off, it builds that uh, larger four-sided surface and trims it back. So now I can knit that face in, and I'll need to extend this surface down a little bit. And now, finally, I've created a new sketch here, and this has the shape of the chamfer that I'd like to build. So now I'm going to trim that fading surface back. Note that I didn't knit it in yet. That way, so when I trimmed it, I didn't trim this portion back. I kind of have a shape where my fillet or sorry, not fill it, but chamfer is going to live. So the modeling of the actual chamfer is pretty easy. I'm just going to start building boundary surfaces between edges. Finally, the, the corner, the second corner. I'll knit these in. The reason I knit here is I now get new edges when I knit. And so this is a surface that fades out. And note that I don't have any tangent or curvature relations. So because these, um, these surfaces are, are built in such a manner, this edge is guaranteed to be, be um, tangent here. And I'm not adding any tangent here. Because this, this surface fades out here, this edge and this edge are in the exact same position. There's no need to have tangency here. I'm automatically going to uh, get that when I build the surface. And I'll build the bottom one. And I'll knit. And to verify that, I can use a deviation analysis tool. Let's just uh, pick this edge. This will tell us uh, how much deviation may be in a face. And I see a max deviation of 0.05, less than a half degree. You'll never see that in the finished uh, molded article. And if we turn off our lines and investigate this chamfer, we see the chamfer just 
fades out. Absolutely nothing here. So by creating that diving surface that was made tangent here and then trimming it back, anything we build in that window is um, is guaranteed to be um, to fade out and wash out to nothing here. Now this this last portion is going to be a little tricky. I could go from this edge to this edge, but the boundary surface is going to like where the this edge and this edge come to this sharp point here. So I'll use the surface fill again because of its power to build that four-sided surface and trim back. So I have tangent on this edge and tangent on this edge. Note that I'm not defaulting the curvature. I'll build that surface. I'll knit it in, and then I'll use the surface evaluation tools. Let's see our zebra stripes to just see. We do actually do have a, a curvature connection here. We don't see that sharp edge. And over here, I may have to remove the stripes. Yep, there we go. There's, I, I see a smooth transition. No need to add uh, tangency here. Looks like a, or sorry, no need to add curvature. Tangency is going to work fine for us. So to recap, I'm preparing the indent area, getting that shape I want. I'll start the indent with a couple quick uh, surfaces, a boundary and an extrude. Build that fillet. I may need to trim back for the proper shape and flow of the surface. The most important part of creating this uh, fading chamfer is the diving surface. And I'll build that with a boundary surface. I'll complete the indent with a surface fill because of its ability to build uh, large and trim back. Finally, I'm trimming the chamfer profile with a surface trim. Now it's just a matter of creating the individual faces of the chamfer with the boundary surface. And note, then, I'm not using tangency or curvature on any of the profiles. The surfaces are automatically curvature continuous based on the cur surfaces here we generated. I'll complete the chamfer with that surface fill. Uh, just because it is a four-sided patch, but where those two edges come to that sharp point, might have some trouble with the boundary surface, so I'll use the surface fill. So thanks for watching this week's installment. Please follow the Damani Group on LinkedIn, where we'll be announcing new videos in the series.